Hi, Mohib Zara here, and today I'm going to show you how to connect an Intel Edison to OctaBlue so you can program it from the cloud. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is make sure your Intel Edison's image is up to date. So go to software.intel.com and be sure to follow their tutorials on doing that. You're going to want to copy the Intel's new image into the Intel Edison volume that shows up when you plug in both USB ports to your computer. While that copies, you're going to want to go ahead and create an OctaBlue account so you can use this visual designer to use these different tools and things such as web service. What we're going to do next is make sure that Edison's UART USB cable is plugged in. We're going to open up a terminal and we're going to open up an SSH session via the serial port. And to do that, we're going to use this command called screen. So in a terminal, type screen slash dev slash tty dot usbs, hit the tab key to autocomplete, and use the baud rate 115200. Uh, the username on a fresh Edison should be root with no password. Once logged in, type in reboot OTA to update using the image that we downloaded to the board. When it finishes, you're going to want to make sure you open up a screen session if you closed it, just like we did before. and we're going to use a built-in command to configure the Wi-Fi. Remember to press enter twice once you start the session and then use the username root. Configure underscore Edison dash dash Wi-Fi will begin a Wi-Fi setup utility. This will begin scanning nearby Wi-Fi networks. Should take about 10 seconds. and then you can select it uh, from this list and add in your password. This should store your Wi-Fi configuration on the board. Next we're going to type in these commands. These are three commands. We're going to go into the node app slot directory which boots up a script on boot that's in that folder. We're going to install our MeshBlue script and we're going to reboot the board. Once this finishes installing and it begins running on a reboot, it'll auto-register the Intel Edison to OctaBlue so that it can be claimed. So you're going to go into the Things page, find an Intel Edison, and if you can't find it through the device discovery, we're going, you can manually add it by claiming an existing UUID. Going back into a screen session on the board, we're going to type cat meshblue.json within the node app slot directory. This will output our UUID and token, which we can then copy into the device details page. And then you can hit add thing and this will configure the Edison to your account so that only you can control and configure it. Unless of course you share those permissions. Once in the designer, we can now create a new flow we're going to name this flow Edison. And you can drag in your Edison node from your configured things. What we're going to do next is configure this Edison uh, so that we can add some control to it. So go into things and then connect to things. We see this components. You can name your component whatever you like and choose the action you'd like it to perform and what pin or address it's on. The name that you give it is the, for any output component will be the name that shows up in the option schema or the message schema. So we'll give this name LED for pin 13 uh, and we're going to add a sensor, uh, an analog sensor on pin 0 and the name you give it will be the name that it shows up as in the OctaBlue designer whenever it sends that sensor data. So if you see here in our message, uh, we can select LED and tell it to output 1 when that, node, that device is triggered and send a 0 when this other thing is triggered. Now we'll go into the Tools tab and we'll drag in a couple of triggers. And now when we deploy this flow and press the top trigger, it'll turn that LED on press the bottom trigger it'll turn it off because it sends a message of on or off one or zero
Once you hit the play button on the top right, it should deploy your flow. Now once it's deployed, we see it pulsing. So if we hit the debug tab, we can see that we indeed are getting a sensor reading under the name sensor that we set in the options page. We're going to go back to connect the things and assuming you've wired an I2C uh, OLED screen, um, you can add that as well to Octoblue so that we can send messages to the screen. So we'll name it OLED. We'll choose the action OLED over I squared C, and in place of pin, we'll put an address, which in this case is 03C. Then we'll go back into the designer, and we'll see that uh, our Edison object now has the options to select an OLED. can select OLED and we can type in a string here now and when we press that trigger the OLED will receive a message from Octoblue to display that string. Let's add some IoT magic to this as well so we're gonna pull the weather node which comes pre-configured in your Octoblue account uh, and we're going to grab a template node We're going to chain those all together, and we'll add an interval to make sure that it does this every couple of seconds. So we'll set that to every five seconds. We select the weather, and we'll tell it to give us the temperature in Mesa, Arizona. And this will output a JSON message of message.temperature. So we have a key called temperature in that message object. And we'll use double curly braces to reference it, and then we'll add text outside of those double curly braces so that uh, it will attach an F after the temperature. Then we'll tell the Edison to send the OLED a message.text, which is the key we set for the template to output. So now we'll hit deploy see here that I've got the OLED and it's receiving the temperature and it's adding an F afterwards so 102 degrees and I press that button the trigger it'll send the string that we put in the node and there you have it